this Welcome family, welcome to the latest episode of Nation Town TV Live. I'm your brother, Brother Landon X. I have no idea who this is behind me. No, I'm just playing. This is uh, my beautiful wife, uh, sister, what's your name again? Sister Shana Joy X, and she's gonna be my, uh, my, uh, my, my partner in crime and, and righteousness for tonight's episode of Nation Town TV. As you can see to my right, those are the topics that we're dealing with, as always, the final call cover story, and also a special topic dealing specifically with black marriage and the revolution of black marriage. Let me start off in the proper fashion. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one God who appeared to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. <clears throat> And I further bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, to be right and exact and down to the modern times. And I wouldn't know anything about those brothers if it wasn't for the Christ figure and I missed, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I just got a smile just thinking about that, that great brother. And uh, I greet you in the words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language because that's the language that the black man and woman spoke long before we knew anything about the grafted, bastardized language known as English. And before we knew anything about the grafted, bastardized man that taught us that language, we greet you in the Arabic language of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, we are running on CP time. Now, when I say CP time, I don't mean uh, black people. I mean colored people time. And those of you that are familiar with the teachers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we're not talking about black people. We're talking about the colored people who've only been here for 6,000 years and they always late um, on everything. But uh, we are running a little late. So we will have an abbreviated show, but we still gonna give you a great show. We are dealing with a couple of great and interesting topics. As always, we start off with the final call cover story. As you see to my right, your favorite president, None other than Donald Trump. His boy snitched on him. He, he, he turned federal witness on him and went in front of the entire world and called him a con man, a liar, and a racist. <gasps> what? Donald Trump is all of that? All oh, praises due to our lot, but I love Donald Trump. But anyway, we're going to get into this article just a little bit. Keep in mind, if you want to read this, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic article. And if you want to read it, whatever city you in, I guarantee you it's a brother somewhere pushing that final call news. If it's, if it's not, then you need to hit up uh, NOI.com and let them know that there needs to be a study group or a mosque wherever you are in the world. But uh, we're going to touch on that topic just a little bit, and we're going to give you the opening paragraph of that, just give you a little tease. But basically, during a riveting day of testimony before the House Oversight Committee, President Donald J. Trump, long, his longtime personal attorney and fixer, I like that word, fixer, said bluntly what many have suspected for years. I am ashamed, this is, this is him speaking, this is Cohen speaking, I am ashamed because I know what, he said what, Mr. Trump is, not who he is, but what he is. He is a racist, he is a con man, and he is a cheat. What? Donald Trump is a racist, a con man, and a cheat. Young lady, dear sister, Shana Joy, I'm gonna give you the first word on your favorite president, my favorite president as well, but not for the reasons that you may think. Tell us how you feel about this particular story and what you got from the story and, and overall. Well, assalamu alaikum, beloved well, family. Alaykum, salam. Uh, first off, I'm not at all surprised this is American politics at its best, you know? 
but this is a really beautiful story to me because it really sheds light on what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been saying since 2016 mm -hmm. when the presidential candidates um, Trump and Hillary were first running he lifted up a verse in the Bible he lifted up the verse to be exact to give you that exact verse which is um, excuse me that exact verse where it states that if Satan cast out Satan he is divided how can his house stand the minister said this in 2016, and it is now 2019. We see this coming to fruition. We have a satanic Jew, Michael Cohen, Go and ahead. I call him satanic just to give you the abbreviated um, background on this because he claims to be a Jew. He claims to practice Judaism. This is a monotheistic Abrahamic religion with uh, the text, their foundational text is the Torah. But just right. as Jesus said, um, if you were the if you were the seed of Abraham, you would do the works of Abraham. But you are of your father, mm. the devil. And he claimed he said not claimed, but he said from his own mouth that he helped Trump to run a, on a campaign of hatred, and he gave out bribes. He paid off hush money. He right. was basically Trump's enforcer. <laughs> you know, he threatened people, he said. He gave out the dirt on himself. So, you're a satanic Jew, because you're not a good Jew, like Michael Hoffman, you know. <laughs> but you are a satanic Jew. You are of your father, the devil. So, we have a satanic Jew, and we don't need to go into Trump. We all know that he's a racist. We all know that he's a con man and a cheat. So, we have Satan casting out Satan. Your world is coming to an end. That's right. You know, That's right. The minister also spoke on how that Trump is peeling off the the civility, the, as, as if the white civility was a, a onion. He's peeling off the layers of white civility, and he, if he is elected president, that he would bring America to hell in a handbasket. Now, let me quote Michael Cohen, who said, "This is his words." And I'm quoting him himself. He said that, excuse me, Cohen said, Trump is destroying civility and public discourse mm. and ruining norms of government that have existed for decades. So every week we hit rock bottom. All right, all praises due to Allah. Uh, I agree 100%. I want to give a shout out to all the uh, viewers, all. 80,000 of y'all tuning in right now. Uh, shout out to Brother Sherman. Assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm. uh, Issa X. Dawood. Assalamu alaikum, dear brother. Beautiful name, by the way. Also, we have Abdul Mateen Muhammad, Deontay Muhammad uh, chiming in. And, we, and when we get, to, especially when we get to the, uh, the point of our next topic, which is dealing with the revolution of black marriage, you know, we definitely want you to comment any questions that you want to ask us. Uh, me and uh, Shana Joy X, we've been married for about uh, 172 years. Like so <laughs> if you have any questions whatsoever, we are the experts. And we're not going to try to cover everything because this is going to be a hot topic on that as well as uh, we're going to have a part two. I'm going to let you know right now, like, you know, like they do uh, in Hollywood with, with comic book movies. You already know it's going to be a part two because we're gonna deal with, with some issues that's facing just the black marriage and the black couple in general. But uh, speaking on the topic that we on right now, uh, you know, I love Trump. I love Trump and here's why I love him. First of all, as, as my wife just said, you know, he is taking this, 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 this wilderness to hell. I mean, it is hell when you think about it. I mean, it is the black man's hell, but he's taking it to hell for everybody. Uh, in a rocket ship. I mean, a hell of a rocket ship. And, uh, but he is the president that America deserves. You know, every president, all 45 of them, their only job was to be the CEO of white supremacy. Um, America, the United States of America is the golden beacon of white supremacy. It is the flagship nation of white supremacy. So none of us should expect anything from an American president, particularly 
if you're an Aboriginal man or woman, meaning black, brown, Native American, even Asian, you don't, and they don't expect nothing from this, from this government. That's why they don't vote. But they, they have some of the most uh, economic uh, independence that we see. But um, he's just the president that, uh, that America deserves. And I really got to give a public service announcement to all my people, the Aboriginal people of this earth. Stop holding your breath. Waiting on Donald Trump to be impeached, to resign, to, 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 to hurt himself, to disappear, to get kidnapped. It, you know, I don't want the Secret Service on me, but, you know, stop holding your breath for that. Just stop. Just stop. Because it's not, nothing is going to change, particularly with this administration. Mike Pence, who is his vice uh, president, He's actually more polished as a politician, so he's going to give you the same, the same uh, evil, the same devilishment, but he's going to polish it and probably get away with it better. The thing about Trump, his devilishment is so obvious that it's convenient. It's convenient knowing that we got a president who tells, tells the world to his face, you know, I'm a con man, I'm a cheat, I'm a liar, and I'm using racism, I'm using racism to wield power. I'm not convinced. First of all, the nature of him and his people is to be hateful of the Aboriginal people. That's, that's all of their nature. If you know one that's not, they're fighting against their nature. I mean, I see pictures all the time of a dog and a cat laying up sleeping together. So every now and then, uh, you know, the creatures go against their nature. But that's, that's just his nature. But I really don't believe that he just wakes up every day, you know, hating black people. I don't believe, and I don't really care. It doesn't make me think more or less of him, but he does understand the art of the deal. He knows how to sell, and he knows that after Obama, white people, and even some non-white people were hungry for someone who was gonna speak up for them, so to speak, and tell the white story and, and stick up for white people and, and get their country back. And he knew that was coming. It's like if, if you knew that there was a drought in your neighborhood or in your city and you had access to bottled water that no one else had, you know, you'd be on that corner the next day if you're smart selling that water. Not because you, you have some kind of passion for water in your heart, you just know that there's a demand for it, so you would actually feed that demand. So I think that's what Donald Trump is doing with his entire presidency. Because, you know, he, I mean, some of the same celebrities and politicians, black celebrities, black politicians, uh, liberal politicians that are calling him the devil right now were taking pictures with him and doing fundraisers with him just 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. And now all of a sudden, he's David Duke. No, David Duke is David Duke. Donald Trump is a salesman, and he's selling the hell out of his product right now, and I'm getting a kick out of it because it's just it's just proven that time is up for him and his people, and he's that wrecking ball. He's that he's that Derek that's bringing it all down, and I'm just getting the kick out of it. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm ready to pick up my part when it all falls down, if you understand. So, like I said, we don't have a lot of time, so we're going to get into our next topic. But before we get into that, I want to point something else out about this congressional hearing that was not a laughing matter, that was nothing to joke about, and it leads into our next topic. There was a sister, and I say sister as the minister has said in the past with big quotation marks. There was a sister named Lynn Patton. She works uh, in the Trump administration. And when Michael Cohen, somebody who would know Trump, knows him very well, basically put him on blast as a con man, a liar, and also as a racist, the Republicans who were in that congressional hearing, they decided that they were going to use this black woman, Lynn Patton, who just happens to be married to a white man. Surprise, surprise. She, they use her as a prop. And they, and they literally used her as a prop. She had to stand up, and we're going to show you a picture of it in a moment. She had to stand up next to a white man that was sitting down, and he said, see, look at my nigga. Look at her. Now, tell the whole world that Donald Trump's not a racist. And, and, she, and she did everything. She, she stepped when they said step. She fetched when they said fetch. If they would have told her to tap dance, do the running man, do the bank head bounce, whatever they would have told her to do, she would have did it right there. And it's, and it's really sad. It's really sad. 
And that leads somewhat into our next topic because I'm going to get into how, as they always have done, they're using propaganda to manipulate, turn the black man and the aboriginal man against the aboriginal woman and using the man as a, as, a, as a weapon against the woman and using the woman as a weapon against the man. And you see it in almost every corner and in every way. And that Lynn Patton situation, Google that name, Lynn Patton. I mean, she's got a real, um, let me stop, let me stop. That's my sister. I'm not gonna throw her under, her under the bus. I'm just gonna throw the evil that's pulling her strings mm -hmm. under the bus. Yes. But uh, our second topic is dealing with the revolution of black marriage. Now, what do I mean by, what do we mean by revolution of black marriage? Well, it's basically the importance of marriage, love, proper courtship, and family amongst the Aboriginal people in this hour. So there's a revolution that must be had by the Aboriginal people at this time, but it, it's only going to happen starting off, first of all, with self-improvement yes. and then with family improvement, which starts with the way the man and the woman deal with one another. I'm telling you, I got bad news. I got bad news because my generation and younger, you know, we look at marriage as, you know, we might do it. We might not. Ain't no big deal. Some of us look at it as old fashioned. But I got bad news. We're not going anywhere without each other. And I'm talking about the black man and the black woman, the Aboriginal man and the Aboriginal woman. And it's got to be based on a foundation of strong marriage. There's just no other way around it. You can say all the right things. You can have all the knowledge. You can be super woke. You can be as woke as you want to be. You can be woke, but if your household is broke, mm. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you know. And that's the thing. We have all these broken homes. And I don't mean broke financially, that too. But studies have shown that, you know, people have greater access to wealth when they're married. But I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the epidemic of broken homes in our community. And it's in all of our communities. Even the, the Cosby Show suburban communities are fractured. And we're doing a good job, some of us, with, with what they call uh, blended families. But we really got to do better with this whole family thing. So that's basically the meaning of uh, uh, that title of an actual revolution of black marriage. And uh, we really want to encourage questions and comments. I believe we had, did we already have a, a question or a comment that you sent me? Uh, no, sir. Okay. But again, we want to encourage any questions or comments. We're not going to be on long tonight, y'all, because we do have a study group. We do want to remind you, if you're on the West Coast uh, tonight at uh, 730, there will be a, a self-improvement uh, study group in your town or city, more than likely. Uh, those of you on the East Coast and Midwest, you're probably in the middle of it, or you've already went through it, or you should have went to it. You need to go next time instead of sitting at home looking at my big head or wherever you are. You should have been in that self-improvement, unless you're perfect, unless you're perfect. Shout out to all the perfect people. Yeah, she perfect. You know, me, no, nah, not so much. So if you have any questions, uh, comments on this topic, go ahead and hit us up. But I'm going to start off with, uh, with my queen. Tell me what comes to mind for you, dear sister, when you, when you consider that topic, the revolution and the importance of Aboriginal marriage. Man, that's a huge topic because we, you know, we're taught that marriage is the foundation of a strong nation. That's right. And when we're in the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we're taught to go to the root. We're taught root knowledge. So when you go to the root of marriage, for us, that begins with courtship. Mm -hmm. So to have a strong marriage, you have to have a strong, solid courtship. And you mentioned, um, I believe you talked about being emotional, um, <laughs> or there might have been us talking <laughs> previously. <laughs> we right. do a lot of talking on that on that subject. You know, when it comes to the issue of the topic of courtship, to for one to begin with a strong courtship, you have to take the emotional aspect out of that we're, if, especially if you come from the world and we're like oh you got a boyfriend i got a man this that and the other I no look me. at the root word of courtship which is court come on when you go to court you look around that courthouse 
and you won't see pretty a lot of people smiling and shucking and jiving. Mm -hmm. No, if this is arguing or presenting an argument, litigation, evidence, and that's exactly what your courtship should be. You know, if you have a courtship and it's all, oh, my favorite color is blue and, you know, I love Pisces, you're probably not doing it right. Mm -hmm. So we want to focus on courtship when it comes to having a strong marriage so that we can build up into that and determining whether or not you are even compatible for each other. You know, so the basis of that, almost honorable Elijah Muhammad said, how strong is your foundation? That's right. Can we survive? And the foundation of marriage is courtship. So we want to work on strong courtships. But first to do that, we have to work on ourselves first. You know, we have to know ourselves. We have to know what we're looking for and what we need out of a mate. That's right. All praise is due to Allah. You know, and, and I, I just got to say it, bottom line, and especially, as I said before, in the age of the woke Negro, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but black marriage and healthy relationships between black men and black women is the most revolutionary thing that any of us can do. I'm so sorry. If you, you know, if you got the, the, the coolest, longest dreadlocks and you got the whole collection of dashikis and you memorized uh, the script to Black Panther, you know, front and back, and you, you know, and you know all the little known facts about black history, but you know, you have a, a disease in your heart about the, the aboriginal opposite sex, or you laying next to the enemy, you literally sleeping with the enemy, somebody that don't look like you, I'm sorry, I don't believe you. As Jay-Z is a wise philosopher named Sean Carter once said, I don't believe you, you need more people. You need more people. You need, you, you, you need a better foundation, as my wife said, because the bottom line is there's nothing you can do in this day and age that's more revolutionary and that's a bigger blow to the enemy and his construct than having a healthy black marriage or at least having a healthy mentality, you know, in your soul, in your mind about the opposite sex. Right. You know, it, it's hard to find somebody that you're compatible with, you know, and I'm not telling you to run out there, if you're a brother, run out there and the first, you know, sister you see, just grab her, you know, caveman style. No, sir, we're not cave people, so we don't do it like that. You want to settle on a good choice, you know, same thing with the sisters. I'm not telling you to, to just grab the first brother you see, but work on yourself to the point that when you think of the black man mm -hmm. and the first thing coming to your mind is everything you didn't like about your ex, mm -hmm. Same thing with the brothers. When you think of the black woman, first thing you think of is all the things you don't like. You got a long way to go. I don't care what you know. I don't care if you know supreme wisdom front and back. I don't care if you memorize the Quran or the Bible. I don't care what you think you know. You, are not, you have not arrived from the sense of, of, of black supremacy, which I believe would be a beautiful thing, but you have not arrived if you don't understand the value of the black marriage and you have a disease in your heart when it comes to the opposite sex. Now, given that, one thing that we've seen lately is an actual issue that came up a couple of months ago about uh, our, our brother, I forgot his name, but he's the brother who, who, who goes by the stage name, uh, Childish Gambino, he's got the hit show Atlanta. And, and, and I love that show, very creative show, but it turned out that uh, we found out that the brother has a child with a white girl, and he patterns himself as his really woke brother, and the question came up, can you be pro-black and marry black? That's the question, and I want everybody in the comments to give us your answer, but I think we might, do we have a, a, a question? Yes, sir, we do have a okay. question. Brother Sherman, assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, brother Sherman. He said, what should one do in their desire to have a strong relationship and ultimately a marriage? Hmm. I'll let you take that one Well, first. you know, I'm going to let you take that question because he also said, <laughs> I believe your queen just answered my question, but I want him to get your perspective as well. Read that again. Yes, sir. What should one do in their desire to have a strong relationship and ultimately a strong marriage? And then I have a little something to add on to that as well, don't you? 
give him your advice? Well, I think the main thing, Brother Sermon, and I'm going I'm to uh, get on you a little bit. I know you're a busy man, but we every Friday night, we have a self-improvement uh, study group. And, brother, if you get the chance and anybody else watching, when you get the chance, come out and meet with us. And, or at least buy the, uh, the, the latest uh, uh, um, self-improvement study guide from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And I say that not just to plug the study group, but self-improvement is the basis for community development. And the first brick that you have to lay for community development is a family. And, and you know, and knowing you, and I'm going to get a little personal, I ain't going to get your business out there, Brother Sermon, but knowing you, I feel like you, you've made a lot of, you know, great strides in that direction because we've had some conversations and, about this topic, and you are a brother, and I run into a lot of brothers who really are ready to go into that field and, and, and that big fields that await the wide awake man and go out there and, and really put your hand, even no matter what happened in the past, you know, because we all got a past, you know. If you over the age of 20, then you've had ex-girlfriends, ex-boyfriends, or you've had some kind of issues or some kind of uh, uh, experience with the opposite sex. But it's good, the, the best sign that I see in any single brother or single sister is when it's hard to get a negative word out of them about the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. And then you have those who you just say something that just rhymes with man and they say something negative or something that rhymes with woman. I don't know what rhymes with woman, but anything that rhymes with woman and they think you say woman and then brother starts saying, oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, that's when you know they have a disease in their heart and, it, and, it, and, and Allah could bless them. God could bless them with a beautiful mate you know, in their midst, in, 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 in their sights immediately, and they wouldn't recognize it because they have a disease in their heart and in their mind. And that's, you know, so you, you taking the, the, the best first step, brother, because you really want it, and you really looking, and you really preparing yourself and conditioning yourself. So that would be my answer to that. Condition yourself first. Yes, sir. And, um, as far as a strong marriage, um, the main thing, you have to remember that when you're married and you have your household, your household is a microcosm of the macrocosm of the universe. Mm. And we're supposed to oh, submit hey. fully and wholly to Allah. That's right. That's how we get peace. That's how we gain heaven. And if you want that same peace, you want that same heaven in your household, that also begins with submission. Mm. The wife should be submitting to her husband because... We're taught that your husband is your Khalifa, your vice, <laughs> your oh, go ahead, go vice gerent. So that what that means is that this man is standing in the place of Allah in your household. You should be, as a wife, should be submitting to your husband, and your husband should be submitting to the wife because your wife is the second self of God. Now, there, that submission is only there, however, however, if that individual, the husband and the wife, is submitting to Allah, That's but right. when you all are when you all are working on yourself and you all are both submitting to Allah, and then in your household you're submitting to each other, that's going to give you peace. That's going to give you harmony. That's going to give you heaven in your household. That's right. And I would also throw in there, you know, because I know <laughs> it might be some sisters like, wait a minute, why I gotta submit to the man? Well, understand what submission actually means. It's not everything he say you do. If what he tells you makes sense, that's submission. It's not about just being his, you know, you ain't being like, you know, <laughs> the, the alleged girlfriends in R. Kelly's house. It ain't that kind of uh, party. But then there's also a duty that's put on the man in the Holy Quran. It says that men are the maintainers of women. Now, it doesn't necessarily say wife. It says women. So men, we're supposed to be the maintainers of our niece, you know, our mother, our sisters, you know, uh, just women that you see that are that are that are that are in your or that are on your uh, post. You know, when you see a woman, you you to make sure that she's all right. You know, we should really have a concern in our heart for the condition of all the women that are in our square, that are around our square, and you know, and if you think about maintainer. You know, that the root word of main, maintainer is maintain, which is also the root word of maintenance. 
you know, which is really not a glamorous thing. You know, if you if you work in a big building, they have something called a maintenance man. That's the brother walking around with all the keys. He got about a thousand keys on, you know, anything break down. He's the one they call, you know, and even if there's a spill or something needs to be cleaned up, they call him. The elevator don't work. The light go out. They call him. So it's not about, oh, yeah, the man runs everything. The man is responsible for making sure that everything runs correctly. And that can be tough. That can be very taxing, but it's extremely important. And it's not about who's the boss and who runs things. I think black men and women get too caught up on that who's calling the shots. When you look around our community, none of us are calling any real substantial shots. So who gives a damn who's, you know, who, who, who's the boss of the household when you're living in squalor, when you, when you, when you broke, you know, butt naked and out of doors? It doesn't matter who, somebody, whoever's running it, they're running it wrong. So we, we misconstrued that whole thing. It ain't about who's the boss. There should be only one boss, and that's Almighty God Allah. And the man is the maintainer, and the woman submits to God through her husband, as long as she sees God in her husband. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I think we have another question, do we? Uh, we have a comment. Comment, okay. Brother Ricky Coleman, we need resourceful and knowledgeable live live interventions such as this program on social media praise god to hear from sober-minded and intelligent brothers and sisters keep up the good work and peace yes sir. Peace to you brother thank you yeah so thank much. you for that comment i also want to point out that you know uh this is i think the second show that we did together we did another show uh similar to this about a year ago but uh there are other believers you know, in the, in the nation of Islam that, that have uh, broadcasted as a couple. Uh, first one comes to mind is my brother, Brother Samuel in uh, Nashville. Uh, uh, we did some work with that brother uh, about a year and a half ago when we went to a small town in Tennessee with my brother Kalia. Uh, so I, I got a chance to work with that brother. He's the student minister at Nashville, Moss number 60. Him and his wife, uh, they did a video series that I thought was absolutely fantastic because it dealt with a very specific issue. Earlier, I mentioned blended families and the fact, you know, I forgot the actual title of it, but it deals with, you know, going through marriage and courtship for the second or maybe even the third time and some things to look out for. And I think that's very important when you consider the condition of our families right now. There is a lot of divorce and I'm talking about black people in general. There are a lot of broken relationships, but, you know, it's beautiful when we don't give up on the concept of marriage. You know? And really, if you're a natural man and a natural woman, as my brother, uh, brother Merlin Muhammad says, how can you give up on the opposite sex? I mean, you, you, somebody needs to sit down and talk to you if you're a man and you ain't trying to have a wife. You're a woman and you ain't trying to have a husband. Somebody need to deal with that. But I don't want to come up off of the point, that the question that we had. And if we have another question, we're going to get to that in a moment. But the question is, can you be pro-black and not marry black? So I'm going to pose that question to my queen. And then if we have a question or comment, we're going to get to that. Do you think that it's ridiculous for, for a black man? Um, we're going to deal with just black men, first off, to be pro-black, claim pro-black, but not marry or love black. Um, no, sir. You cannot claim to be pro-black. That is. But marry other than yourself, other than black, you know, especially white. I mean, if you're within the, the, the realm of the aboriginals, you all, you know, you okay. But you go straight out to your enemy. You know, we're taught in the Holy Quran that the uh, Aboriginal, the Asiatic black man, Allah oh. made us both of the same, of his same essence. Come on now. So if you take the essence of God and you pluck from it the man and then you pluck from it the woman and you have a black man that forsakes half of himself to go to the devil, and marry his natural and open enemy, how can you love self when you just forsook half of it, That's you right. know? So no, sir, you, I, I do not believe that you can be pro-black because you don't even know 
you don't even know what the whole other half is going through to you haven't even accepted to take on the responsibility to maintain, to love, to sustain, to protect, to provide for that other half. So that's, that's a whole a whole yeah. half of the population that you just discarded. Mm, go ahead. Uh, I agree with everything she said. Um, she's the second self, so I'm a second her 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 uh, her notion. But uh, it's it's pretty simple. Since community development starts at the microcosm, as my queen said earlier, and then it builds out to the macrocosm, whatever you're doing in your own household, that's indicative of what you're going to do outside of that and what's really in your heart outside of that. You may know the struggle. You know, I mentioned in a video that we did for Nation Town, I'm going to go over this real quick. When people come into the knowledge of self, it causes what I call the three A's. The three types of black person, you know, you got the uh, first thing you be you, you might be ashamed. And that's what we dealing with right there. That's the kind of black man who knows the history of his people and the plight of his people. So it makes him ashamed. So he's always looking to whiten himself and sisters do it, too. You know, but the brother's looking to whiten himself and it starts with his woman. The second step is the angry black man, which a lot of us get, you know, real enamored with because they sound good and you know they get us turned up but really they just waiting on the white man to give them a piece of their pie and then all of a sudden you don't hear about them no more they change their style up because they finally got you know some fried chicken from from massa and then you got the asiatic the asiatic is, is what this brother behind me is the honorable minister lewis farcon because he is not about hating white people or nothing like that he understands white people he understands himself he understands god and he knows the role that they play in this world. But uh, I think we have another uh, question or comment. We're going we gonna to do this maybe for another 10 minutes, 5, 10 minutes. And then we're going to have to shut it down and get ready for this beautiful self-improvement study course. But go ahead, dear queen. My beloved sister, Valerie. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, sister Valerie. This Sister Valerie is Moss number 27. Come on now. I just gotta now. put that out there. That's right, that's I, right. Don't get me started on Sister Valerie. That's a whole nother show right there. That's right. You know 27, you know Sister Valerie. Come on, man, come on. <laughs> My beloved Sister Valerie, she said, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11 through 13, the head of man is Christ, mm. and the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Oh, praise God. Come Christ. on now, come that's on. Right. That, and that speaks for itself, and yes. that pretty, that's the perfect uh, 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 way to, to tie up basically what both of us were trying to say. She put it right there. And I also want to want to put this out here. Here at Moss 27, we heard from Brother Sermon. We heard from Sister Valerie. Uh, I, I see Brother Jabbar on the, on the timeline as well. You know, I, I, I'm not saying nothing, but we have some brothers and sisters in, in, in the nation of Islam that are really committed to building that nation within a nation, and they just looking for a mate. I ain't saying no names, but you know, I'm telling you, you know, don't come into the nation, don't come into the mosque looking for no man or no woman, but I'm just here to tell you, once you get that knowledge of self, knowledge of God, knowledge of the devil, you know, we got the tools here to help you, uh, you know, build a nation. I'm just saying that because there's some really beautiful people, you know, who, who are really, truly pro-Aboriginal and they're, and they're pro-salvation. You know, and they just need they just need a, a a partner in crime. So I'm just putting that out there. I ain't saying no names, but you know, all praise is due to and Allah. When you're nation building, you know, if you if you're pro black and you're nation building, you want to see yourself in that nation. You mm. know, so you cannot be pro black and be marrying white <laughs> and dating white and uh, producing. Um, with white women and white men because you're not going to see yourself in that. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a big uproar on Facebook. A white lady was being called racist because she said she didn't want to date outside her race because she wants children that look like her. All praise belongs to That's Allah. Right. I feel you. I'm the same way. You know, so how, how can you be pro-black pro and you're not reproducing black? You know, that's the death of... That's, that's, it's not the death of us because anything, you know, you, any, anything got a splash of, 
of, of black in it that's black, but you're reproducing with something other than self, you're not bringing us back in because when you have marriages, interracial marriages, they always lean more towards the white side. And why? Because that's the ruling <laughs> race right. in this world. That's right. All praises due to Allah. Now, uh, we're going to close on this uh, topic. We're going to hear from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as we strive to do uh, every episode. Uh, but I also want to touch on a topic that blends both of those topics that you see to my right. Uh, because one thing that's going on right now that's really disturbing, I see a trend because real quick, you know, during uh, slavery, when a brother was, you know, lynched, if he was castrated, if he was just whipped, you know, it was the, one of the few times that the slaves on the plantation would get the opportunity to get a break because they would call all the slaves to gather around and watch Kunta Kinte get his foot cut off or to watch the skin get, you know, whipped off of his brother's back. back. And one thing that they would do, they would make sure that the sisters, the black women, would come and stand up front so they could see the annihilation of this black man's character, this black man's physical body, and just, you know, just humiliate him in front of his black queen to break that barrier, and that's where the seeds were sown to what we have right now. And they're still playing that game, but they're doing it on a high-tech level. And one thing I saw this week, I saw our sister, quotation marks, strong quotation marks, Gail King, uh, that's Oprah's girl, I mean, Oprah's uh, uh, homegirl, and uh, Oprah herself, Oprah, you know, y'all told Harpo to hit me, and then we had Lynn Patton that we mentioned earlier. And I'm just going to show you a little picture. And it broke my heart seeing something like this. Mm -hmm. But what's wrong with these pictures? Now, that's Lynn Patton at the top, used as a prop, as a token Negro, to say, Massa ain't racist. He only, he only, he only raped me and whipped me once or twice a week. He's a good Massa. You know, that's the, that's, that's the way, that's what I felt when I saw that. And then below that, you have Oprah, you know, who's telling the world right now that Michael Jackson is this, this, this evil person based on uh, allegations that have not been proven in any way, shape, or form. This man's been under surveillance for 15 years. I ain't gonna get into all that. But here she is kissing Harvey Weinstein. And I've read some of the details of the accused, because the accusers of Harvey Weinstein are not popping up out the woodwork from 50 years ago. Mm, right. this, these are coming back from five years. Lupita Nyong'o, who was on Black Panther, who was on the upcoming movie Us, uh, 12 Years a Slave, ironically, has even uh, complained about Harvey Weinstein, how he basically told her straight up, hey, if you want your career to blow up, then you need to lay down with me. And look at what, look at what Oprah is doing. She's kissing him on his cheek. I've never seen her kiss Denzel. I've never seen, I mean, uh, Denzel's wife might have something to do with that, but I've never seen her kiss a black man like that. I've never seen her kiss Stedman like that. But look at her kissing him. And then you got her homegirl, uh, Gail King, cozied up with him. And this man is an absolute perv. He is, a, he is filthy. If you read some of the details, notice that we don't all know the details. We know all about the Bill Cosby Quaaludes. We, all know, we know all about R. Kelly and his urination in the videos. You know, we know all about, you know, they stripped our brother Michael down to his drawers back in the day and still didn't find nothing. We know all about that, but nobody knows details about Harvey Weinstein unless you go on the internet and study it like you're studying for a class. That's how I had to go through to find some of that stuff out. But look at this picture. Look at these pictures, man. You know, and this, and I'm not blaming black women for anything. I'm talking about us being used, as it says in our teachers, the teachers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the supreme wisdom, as a tool and also a slave. Black men are being used in the same fashion. We've been used in entertainment. A lot of these rappers, the things that, we, that these male rappers say about black women and the way they, they portray black women in their videos and their music, that's them. That's, that's an example of black men being used as a tool and a slave. But now it's this very hidden propaganda that you see going on with black women, particularly educated 
powerful, successful black women who have been used to say, look, white men can do no wrong, black man needs to burn. That's the, that's the, the, the actual uh, uh, environment that we're in right now. But we're going to touch on that a little bit more on next week's episode. We will continue this. Go ahead. Yes. I mean, this devil doesn't change. He is highly consistent, and that is part of the reason why he's so successful. Right. Like my husband mentioned, when they would take a black man and break him during slavery, they would pull the black woman up front. They did this for multiple reasons, because they used the black woman then as they use her now as a tool to break a man and to lead the women in the direction in which they wanted them. So that black woman saw her man getting broke down and she goes and she teaches the boy. She basically unwittingly emasculated the men. You know, you're big and strong, but you, you look down, don't you say nothing to Massa? You know, you stay in line when you deal with Massa. And she taught the women, oh no, you you, you step up, you we, we do the bidding. And That's that right. is what we see now. They are using black women to emasculate our black men, to tear them down, to put them in the place in which a white man wants them, which is underneath their foot and low, and showing the, the black women, oh, this is what we do to black men. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, and before we close out, uh, dear brothers and sisters, keep in mind there will be a part two of this. We're going to do it next Friday and we're going to have a special guest. I'm not giving no hints, but he's somewhere in the background. It might be the minister. It might be whoever else is in the back. No, I'm saying it would be beautiful if we had the Honorable Minister Louis Farcom. But that other brother back there who is his Western Regional Student Minister, you know, I talked to him today. He said he's down to do it. And this is a man who's been married, I believe, almost as long as I've been alive. And he's been in the ranks uh, for a minute, too. So he's going to he's going to help us deal with this topic. But in the next episode, we're going to deal more with the details of courtship, give you a little, you know, introduction of how we do it in the nation of Islam and why we do it like that in the nation of Islam and the benefits that it can have that it definitely would have for the black community as a whole and the aboriginal community as a whole. But to give you a little taste of that and to kind of, you know, get, get your mind right for that, we're going to listen to this beautiful man in, in the background, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, as he gives a brief uh, explanation uh, about courtship in the nation of Islam. Praise is due to a lot. That's just a little taste, dear brothers and sisters, but we gots to go. Uh, again, uh, we welcome you out to Muhammad Mosque, number 27, 8701 South Vermont. This Sunday, I believe the, uh, our Western Regional Student Minister, uh, Tony Muhammad, will be teaching and also invite you out tonight uh, for our study group. Doors are open to all those who want to self-improve. If you're perfect, don't pay me no never mind, but me, I need this. Because I'm, I'm, she'll tell you, I'm, I'm ignorant. I'm, I'm ignorant. So I need this. I need it. She need it too. She need it too. <laughs> All praises due to Allah. With that said, I want to thank everybody that's watching. Get your questions together. Get your mind right. Because tomorrow, around the same time, we, we inshallah, no. Nah, Inshallah, we, we all, it's always best to say inshallah, but we definitely are going to get started a lot earlier so we have more time for our beloved Western Regional Student Minister.
language of assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.